Hello, hello everyone. Following my series of uh, legendary upgrades, today we're going to take a look at the Yamato legendary upgrade, which is called Enhanced Main Battery Guns. Um, normally in this slot you would run the Main Battery Mod 3, the faster reload, which costs you some tra traverse speed. Enhanced Main Guns, in comparison to that one though, um, you lose 6% turret traverse, but in return you gain 7% max dispersion. Your reload stays the same. So, things to look out for uh, in the upcoming uh, game is issues with turret traverse, as even with running expert marksman, your turret traverse is atrocious. And of course, that spicy, spicy dispersion, because, well, the ship already has great dispersion and great sigma, so buffing it even further should be quite interesting. Uh, Build-wise, standard premium consumables. Uh, Upgrade-wise, turret survival, questionable. You can run auxiliary. Um, damage control, dispersion, tankiness, concealment. Honestly, basic Yamato build besides the legendary upgrade. Captain perks wise, once again, very standard Yamato build. Uh, priority target, expert marksman, AR, uh, superintendent, vigilance, concealment expert, and fire prevention. Now, fire, I would obviously take fire prevention before vigilance if I was specking. This was a new captain I was specking. But very standard survival uh, battleship build. So, let's see how our new legendary upgrade performs. My initial impressions just upon seeing the stats on the upgrade was that well this one is going to be good because it pretty much fits the Yamato playstyle extremely well even though you can see the turret traverse like look at my back turret trying to trying to angle trying to turn in to shoot that guy it is horribly slow the turret traverse is horribly slow and that's something we have to acknowledge but it just Yamato's bread and butter are its guns. Those huge... it only has 9 guns compared to many other battleships that have 12. Um, if, a, if a ship has 8 guns like the Republic then it has significantly better reload in return. So it makes up for this lack of guns by having 460mm shells which of course allow you to overmatch pretty much anything when it comes to other battleships. There are exceptions of course like Grosse Korforst and so forth but uh, the overmatch mechanic, the huge shells and the great accuracy. Those are like the bread, bread and butter. So a module that improves these guns, a module that improves the accuracy, the consistency of these guns, it feels very straightforward, like kind of a must-have. Especially since the trade-off is, is turret traverse. Now the turret traverse is already terrible, but in general, you tend... Oh my god, that dispersion. That That is pretty juicy, <laughs> I have to say. That dispersion is pretty damn juicy. I mean, Yamato dispersion is already quite good. But being able to improve it to give you that consistency, or even more consistency, it just seems like such a straightforward upgrade. Unlike the Zaha one, where um, you kind of hesitate because you're giving up range. Giving up turret traverse... I mean, Yamato playstyle to begin with is a very static, very passive playstyle. You don't play it anywhere near as aggressive as something like Montana or something similar, mostly because if you have to turn and get broadside in the Yamato, you have a huge citadel, and also you don't really want to be turning, well, I already got citadel by that Dizuma because I'm giving too much broadside. Case and point right there. <laughs> Case and point, what a, what a perfect example of exactly why you don't really want to be giving too much broadside in the ship compared to many other battleships. Um, but you also, the turret traverse is already so sluggish that you, in general, you don't want to be moving and uh, repositioning too much because you have to wait for so long for these turrets to adjust. And now with this module, uh, it kind of makes it even slightly more passive. Oh, he's trying to pull broadside to me. The dispersion on those back shells are... Wow. Some of that dispersion is disgusting. Did I aim too high, though? I think I aimed a bit too high, so no citadels, but still the, that punishing damage, that, that consistency. And this is kind of the position where you would want to park a Yamato. In fact, looking at right now the map, our positions are very good. We have two caps, we're delaying B. All we need, all my team needs to do is kind of just defend. But it is, this was played on patch weekend, so I expect my team to charge in and die because that's usually what your team does when you have a capture point advantage. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, we're winning. How can we possibly screw this up? 
And as I say that my Frite Grosse charged through C and got killed. And now my Yugomo is also charging through C into their spawn and probably gonna get himself killed. So we'll have to see how this one will turn out. Using the map trick. For those wondering, what the hell was that? Why did the camera suddenly flip in that weird way? That was me tapping the M key, which is the map key, and uh, changing the perspective to get a bird's eye view, or basically getting the spotter plane perspective briefly to have a better idea of where I'm supposed to aim. Oh, dispersion is good, but I think it's going to accelerate too quickly. The, dis the distance is too long. No, I still get a few hits on him, a bit of chunking on him. Ultimately, though, I can't really... Uh, right now, I think I'm in a good position. In the sense that I'm able to delay B, which is right now our objective. Um, the enemy team tries to push around this flank here, but if they do, I'm in a good position to stop it. So, I'm stopping their push, and I'm helping defend B. So, I actually quite like my position. In general, you want in the Yamato positioning is very, very important. You want to be in a position where you're not too deep, because if you're... If you had pushed too far in, you kind of die in the Yamato. You, it's just almost impossible. You try to turn out, you get citadeled, uh, so you're just forced to reverse, but your concealment is so bad and you're, you're so sluggish and so forth that you tend to just get burned to death. So ultimately, you actually want to maintain a distance. So having this module that makes your role, your position more effective, even though it comes at the cost of Turtverse, is a pretty damn good trade. Because once again, you don't really need Turtiverse. You're not pushing in as close as you do in a Montana, certainly not as close as you would in a Conqueror. In general, you're trying to maintain that distance oh, when a Kama is pushing the cap. Of course, with the position I'm in, I absolutely should try to help defend this cap. Is that enough lead? Uh, I think my lead looks pretty good. We'll see if we can punish him a bit. Oof, the dispersion was very good, but I think he managed to turn out just in time to evade it. It did scare him though, and he looks like he is bailing and leaving the camp. So we st we're still in a pretty good position, even though the Yugoma, as I mentioned, did charge in to the enemy base to die for absolutely no reason. Izuma giving a lot of broadside. He is turning out. Overall, though, I haven't really seen any really bad dispersion volleys. Most of the time, um, the misses I'm seeing, the Yamato, the misses I'm seeing on these volleys is mostly the ships turning out and evading my shells. Not actually the dispersion really screwing me over. Now, that's kind of a Yamato trait to begin with. Yamato has very, very accurate guns. But it's something we have to pay attention to in this, uh, in this gameplay clip because we are running even further improved. Oh, he's turning full broadside again. This time we're going to aim a bit lower. See if maybe this time we can catch him and look at that dispersion. Oh my. Aiming a bit lower works out significantly better and this time we actually catch him with a citadel as well. The gearing charge into the cap, which is a bit questionable considering they have multiple radars. They got two Kronstadts and a Cleveland sitting right outside the cap. I'm not sure what his plan was, but this is such a questionable move. This is such a questionable move. Oh, I want to shoot the Zuma, but his turret traverse. Look how long it takes for my turrets to turn. The Zuma had time to turn so much before my guns fired, simply because that turret traverse is so atrociously slow. And the damage is pretty underwhelming. I'm still trying to put some pressure on them, trying to help my gearing stay alive. I'm giving them a fair amount of broadside, but honestly, I just pushed in closer to be able to support them better, because this gearing pushed into triple radars. And now he's being crossfired. He is probably going to die. And that's going to be a pretty huge issue because with the Yugoma suiciding into the spawn and our gearing now suiciding into the cap. Oh wow. 15k volley over that island? Damn. I landed uh, 5 pens and an over pen on him. Wasn't expecting quite that much damage, but I'll certainly take it. And now let's see if I can help him with this court force. The court force is turning out. We of course wanted to hit that belt for those big penetrations instead of getting those measly over pens. Uh, we do get three pens. I mean, it's 17k volley. It's a it's a good hit, but not quite enough to get the kill. Still, though, under the pressure, he is. My team should be able to secure him. I should probably help just in case. You have to make these decisions quite early with this turret traverse because you saw how long it took for my guns to turn. Let's make sure this guy doesn't get away and heal up, because if he did, we would be in some serious trouble. And my AP does secure him, and make sure we have the kill. So we have 750 points. We have all three caps. So all really we need to do is just 
hold on and wait for the enemy team to be dumb enough to push into us and we will pretty much automatically win the game. But of course, um, trying to... Ex expecting your teammates to understand that kind of huge advantage... Yep, that's unlikely to happen. I'm already watching my team for some reason charging through C-Cap into their spawn. And the problem is they're charging in with cruisers. It's a Cleveland, a Kronstadt and the Mogami and the Missouri is already half dead. So um, they're about to be facing multiple battleships. Well, at least one battleship um, in a bunch of cruisers <laughs> in the open. Ouch. Oh, this is awkward. I can't shoot the Kaba. I would love to be able to shoot the Kaba here, um, but he's just right behind the island. I've been maintaining this position though, I've been very happy with this position. Um, I've been able to support B, I've been able to deny and help camp B, and my presence here means that any sort of flank by the enemy team up this um, eastern flank, sorry, western flank, any sort of push up that western flank would be stopped by me. So I actually very much like this position. The problem is my team... They are pushing. Oh god, they're charging into that, and there's really no need for it. If you have three caps and enemy team is base camping, you don't want to play into their game. I mean, if they're base camping, they probably have pretty good defensive positions, and on a map like this, if you push through the islands, you, you kind of end up being crossfired, and that's exactly what's happening right now. And my team is dying one by one for no real reason whatsoever. I should help with the Kronstadt. He's fighting my Kronstadt. I need to help him, just in case, because uh, my Kronstadt is caught full broadside. I don't know why my Kronstadt is giving full broadside, but let's make sure we kill that enemy Kronstadt as well. Now we still have the lead, but the problem is all our DDs are dead. We don't have a single destroyer left, and that's very, very awkward at this point. Especially, oh no, my team just keeps charging in. And now my Kronstadt is left all alone, and he's still giving full broadside to pretty much the entire enemy team. So he's probably going to die as well. We I've been seeing a lot of this. It's... Um, people who are buying the 750k XP Kronstadt and they have no idea what angling means because they're not used to playing cruisers. They're used to playing battleships where you can give a lot of broadside and get away with it. Um, so now they're doing it in the Kronstadt and they're just being obliterated. Seeing as that left flank is absolutely collapsing and because they're suiciding in, uh, this, I finally, I have to go in. I have to push. I have to try to make something happen because my team is throwing away their lives for no reason. That huge lead we had, it's pretty much been negated. So I push into this enemy Kronstadt on this flank. He's caught, he tried. He couldn't turn out, because if he had, he would have given me broadside. So he turns nose in. I instantly stop, because in a situation like this, a huge threat is the enemy team ramming you. And that's probably what the Kronstadt wants to do. He wants to absolutely ram me. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. So we're stopping, and we're getting ready to reverse at this point, because he could still turn to the right and try to get away behind the island, but it looks like he's committing, so we need to we need to be reversing fast right now. We don't want to end up being rammed. He's getting some good AP hits with that Kronstadt AP, but ultimately it's a trade I'm more than happy willing to take because I simply have to make something happen. Aiming extremely low since he's coming towards me, and I want to overmatch that nose and get those big pens in. I'm not getting any citadels, sadly, but I am getting some good pens. I'm gonna give a bit more broadside. I want to use my back turret. Even if using my back turret means opening me up for more AP punishment, um, I need to kill him fast. Another 9k chunk on me, but he's dying so quickly, he will not be able to get the ram off. Secondary is setting double fires on him as well. Yeah, he's in some serious trouble here. And the next AP volley does get me the high caliber as well as the Kraken. In the meanwhile though, my team has once again managed to throw some ships away. I don't really know why, all they need to do is defend the caps, but they are pushing in and they are dying. So they do get the Alsage burned down, but they trade their life for it. And when you're down ships, trading evenly, not really the best idea. So we're down to two ships at this point. Me and this rune, and the rune is charging into B. We still have a capture point lead, we still have an advantage. There is absolutely no reason to push anywhere. And I got a really good position to help harass them if they try to go around that flank, as you can see from that citadel of the hipper. But my rune insists on charging in. And if you look at the minimap, the hipper and the two cruisers on the right will create a crossfire on this rune, and the rune is going to be in huge trouble. So, because of this rune's very questionable push, I'm gonna have to push this flank. 
Because I can't allow these guys to farm my runes broadside. I need to basically be the distraction. Once again, we're in a iffy situation though. They will no doubt try to run me again. And they will no doubt try to simply kill me. Aiming for that nose. Want to overmatch it. Hit him right, right into the citadel. And once again, we are stopping. We don't want to risk the ram. Um, it's one of the best ways to deal with the Yamato. Of course, the Yamato is strongest when you can just sit there angled nose in. And especially with this dispersion I have, I'm consistently chunking them so, so heavily. So obviously they try to go for the ram. Not surprisingly, the rune that pushed into B for no reason got killed. And now I'm 1 versus 4. I do sit at all the Cleveland straight through the nose and manage to take him out, but the Baltimore is still pushing heavily. I do have heal left though, and once again I have stopped, I don't want to get rammed by this, I don't want to get rushed by them, so I'm just going to be maintaining my position, and actually we're going to go full reverse. We don't want to take any risks, we need to kill him before he can get in a, in a, into a ramming position. Once again we're aiming low, we want to hit that nose, those shells pen straight through the nose, ignoring the armor, and basically tearing the ship apart. Very hard to sit that out. The Baltimore, it seems though. Um, the Baltimore has a significantly smaller citadel than, for example, um, the Des Moines. So whereas that would probably have been citadels on a Des Moines, on a Baltimore, no such luck. Another few pens straight through the nose, and I do finish off the Baltimore as well. The problem is though, the enemy has flipped all three caps, and I'm of course still completely alone. At this point I have seven kills, but <laughs> um, I'm against the Kaba, and we, well, the fundamental issue is that a Kaba can so very easily outplay me. A Kaba is probably one of the worst deities for me to fight because he's so stupidly fast, and he, outspot he still outspots me because, well, he's still a destroyer, so any move I attempt to make, if I leave A, he's gonna rush and cap A. So the question is, what exactly is my play? I popped the spotter plane, because this hipper is trying to lob shells over the island. So I popped my spotter plane in the hopes that if this guy shows himself, I might be able to blind fire him and kill him off. You see, I'm, I'm tracking where the shells are coming from, and I'm shooting that location. The idea is, of course, to blind fire just as you blind fire in the smoke, blind fire the hipper. It appears the hipper is moving, though, as I get no hits on him. Heal comes up again, I pop it instantly since uh, I've used my damage con and Kaba can easily burn me to death unless I do. So I've basically been playing this entire position, this entire... This, this flank I've been pretty much locking it down this entire game and <laughs> all we needed to win was for my team to not charge in. But, I mean, it's patch weekend. It's patch weekend. You, people do the dumbest shit. For example, this hipper. Why is he charging into me? There's no need for this. And thanks to this... Incredibly questionable charging. I am in front of where he's sailing and thanks to of course the nature of these AP shells They ignore his armor and they just absolutely wreck him. The problem is still though It's three caps to one and there's too much time left the points will easily tick in their favor the Question is what should I do here the Kaba can just the problem is the Kaba can literally hide behind that island and If I try to rush him well, he can hide far behind it So if I try to rush him he can just kite away. Oh, he's actually spotting me he has such a huge advantage. My only hope is that he will pick a fight with me, because I mean, a Kaba kind of easily can easily defeat a Yamato simply because uh, if he maintains 13 km distance, he can just burn me to death, and I will struggle to land any shells because the Kaba is so quick and agile. But even worse is that I think this Kaba is actually a coward. He's not shooting, so he's not even willing to take the fight at all. He's going for the absolute guaranteed victory, which isn't necessarily. A bad play. I mean, he's securing the win for his team, but it is a bit frustrating for me, of course. Uh, in a way, it's also flattering. He's, I, I guess he's kind of terrified at this point. I have eight kills. I have killed two-thirds of his team, so the Kaba is so terrified of me that he's simply sneaking behind the islands to cap A. At this point, with a minute left, uh, there's no way I can make the turn into A and try in any way to deny this cap. He's parked behind the island. Well, either one. It's more likely that he's parked behind the left island, but I'm going for blind fire in the hopes that maybe he's just peeking his ship around the corner. But there's absolutely no way of, sec no way of securing it. And the Kaba will be able to flip the cap, and there's really nothing I can do about it. Um, he, trying to turn in, the island was in my way. Maybe I could have maybe desperately have made it there in time, but it's just... If he's sitting on the very north edge, as soon as I turn in, he can see me. And then he can just 
basically sail away and absolutely nothing I can do about it. The points are going to flip in their favor and the game is obviously going to end in a loss, regardless of my attempts to delay the points by going into B. In retrospect, it's very easy, of course, in hindsight to say, well, Flamo, you should have rushed the cover right away. But that's the kind of play it's, that's easy to make afterwards, because, of course, I didn't know the Kaba would simply park behind the island and sit there. I was hoping he would actually pick the fight with me. Game ends, and it is sadly a defeat. Um, clearly, on a patch week and 292,000 damage, and a Kraken, a Confederate, a high caliber, and first blood, is simply not enough to secure a victory for your team. So, well... Patch weekend is patch weekend. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, I, I would claim to be surprised, but honestly, I have seen such questionable teams this weekend that I'm not the least bit surprised. Team score wise, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I did score more XP than the winner on the enemy team, which is of course pretty amusing. But yeah, it is. It is pretty sad. And, of course, the guys who died first are at the bottom, the Yuguma and Friri Tegrosi that charged in, and then we just have one by one the ships that for no reason pushed in to die, and that's kind of how it goes. I, I often say it's it's actually a bit of a downside to get an early advantage in random battles, because your team, instead of using that advantage, they try to win harder, and then they rush in and die, and then you lose the game instead, so <laughs> very, very questionable. Uh, detailed report was uh, 100 shells. 282k damage. Very, very nice average damage per shell, I would say. 288 fired. Secondary battery, not really doing much. But then again, with the Yamato, you shouldn't really go for the second secondary battery. Damage received, I tanked 113k. Not really that much potential, not really that high either. Uh, the problem, of course, was that the reason why you don't get that much potential in this kind of game is every time they could shoot me, they could actually hit me. So, and uh, they were shooting a lot of HE and stuff as well, or I was giving too much broadside at times when I was trying to support B. So, questionable game, but the module? Nothing questionable about the module. The Yamato upgrade module is amazing. I think this is one of those that, as soon as it comes out, if it comes out in its current state, it's just a straightforward upgrade. Trading 6% turret reverse for 7% improved dispersion on a ship that relies on its dispersion to be effective. Yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, the legendary upgrade for the Yamato is absolutely goddamn amazing. And it's going to be a must slot. Nothing like the Zao, where there's some question, some doubt, um, some shifts in playstyle. The Yamato one is just a straight up upgrade. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the game, and I will talk to you guys later.